Blickhopper! Blickhopper! I know you said about you wanting to create some content, but this... <laughs> Blickhop! Oh, in the ring! <laughs> Come on. Something a little bit different for today's uh, adventure. We've come to Barston, Rob. Great place. I love this venue. I absolutely love it. Brilliant place. Brilliant place. And I've got a really big competition. Well, we've both got some big competitions actually coming up here soon. And they centre around the one that I'm fishing very, very soon, centres around silverfish. So there's going to be obviously two main tactics, Rob, pole and feeder, I'm saying. So we thought, why not bring you on a little bit of a test? I think two heads are better than one, aren't they? Without so a doubt. You've got a big match coming up this weekend. We need to hopefully get you over the line on that big match. Be nice. We need to know the tactics. We need to know mm. how this particular lake is fishing at the minute. So I think if we can both sort of do contrasting methods, yep, completely might give you a bit of a bit of a an idea of what what to expect really come mm. the day. Mm. So, well, I think I'm thinking it needs to be pole and feeder. So one of us fishes pole, one of us fishes feeder. I and think so, yeah. Because and obviously, work out what's happening. at different times of day, different ones are going to be better than others. I'm saying so. If you, we can, you'd expect to fish pole second half of the match, wouldn't you? You would, and it'd be nice. Like, let's say you're fishing pole and you figure some stuff out on pole. That gives me a day to figure some stuff out on feeder. So that'll be. That's what I think what we need to do. But well, we we need to decide. So I'm going to say we need to we need to work out where we're going to sit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Where? Oh yeah. Where we're going to sit. Where we're going to yeah. sit. Yeah. And what method? What methods? Mm. So mm. I've got all my gear. Brilliant. You say about tossing a coin. Tossing a coin. Yeah. No. Or what we're we doing, a balling in or something. I've got a. Oh, you could talk about. You could say balling in. I've got a great little thing that we could do. Wait, you there? Right. I've literally got no idea what's coming here. <laughs> this, this could be anything. <laughs> this will test your skills, Lee Kerry, because if you look at this. What, this. Wh what are you doing? This <laughs> is the ultimate balling in. Okay. So we strap this on. We strap this on in here. There is your ball for balling in. <laughs> right. And your job yeah. is to swing this ball <laughs> into the cup. <laughs> Fastest person to get that ball in this cup gets to choose. Gets to choose first, I'm saying. They can choose the method and the peg. Are you but, up for that? I'll go for it. So you this go will for test. It. This will test go on, then. your balling in skill. So what show me, show me the I'm technique. gonna put I'm gonna put a little timer up. Right, go on then. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, I've got to say, this is what this is. You're killing me. Right. It was my birthday recently. Right, yeah. And as a joke, I got this. Is that what you got? Yes. Oh, so cool. and I thought that'd be, that'd be perfect, wouldn't it? I love it. That's it? absolutely it's called, perfect. If anyone ever wants to buy one of these, it's called Balls Up. Swing away. <laughs> Swing away. Right, go on okay. then. So we'll get a timer in the screen. Go on then. Okay. Ready? Fastest to ball, ball up yep. wins. You ready? Okay, okay then. Three, two, one, go. Come on, let's get the swing on. <laughs> Come on. Get a swing on. I think you've got to get a big swing on, then flick up. <laughs> oh. Do you know what I'm finding interesting? This is flick up. Oh. I know you said about you wanting to create some content, but this <laughs> flick up. Oh, in the ring! <laughs> come on, come on, come on! I think what we're going what? to have a 30 second limit. <laughs> you've got it. You've got it. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, he's in the, the way. hoodie in the way. This is great. This is yes. Well done, mate. Well right. Done. So I'm saying, well done. That was quick. Get in there. That was quick, was it? Yeah, I think that was quick. Four, oh, you've four been or five goes. I've I'm been assuming you've. I was going to say, I'm assuming yeah, you've had some practice, right? Oh my god. It's this quite is... tight around your waist, isn't it? That? Is it? Yeah, but I'm buff, aren't I? So yeah, good to say buff. Yeah. <laughs> right. So hang on. I've seen it. I saw that your hoodie got in the way. Yeah. So See, I'm that... always improving. This is right. this is like going second at a golf shot, isn't it? You've got. You've got the yeah. line, haven't you? Now you know how yeah, to do it. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, you've got some good swinging going, right? I've got some good swinging, I've got some good hits. Where's my, where's my van? All right, go on then, I'm ready. Right, I'm ready wait, ready. wait, 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 wait. Yeah, oh, hang on. Go. <sighs> I'm going to get some momentum. <laughs> I'm going to get some momentum. <laughs> you try first time. Yeah, no. oh, God, that was so close. It needs to come closer than you think, doesn't it? I've got it this time, though. I've got it this time. Oh! <laughs> Yes, yes. Second time. That is the benefit of watching me ball up. Oh, listen, I watch you ball up. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go. <laughs> that one looks really muddy. So you can have that one. I'll have the less muddy one and I'll go pole. I've been doing some pole fishing, so I'll okay. go pole and your feeder. Which makes it nice and easy for me because I would love to just get one rod out and have a chuck out. Well, that's good. I'm interested to know what you're going to do because I had a few ideas got, on feeder. So let's go, let's go and have a little look, shall we? We have done it again. Underwater footage is a game changer when you're trying to learn about fishing. And we have gone and got some incredible stuff. 
the clearest footage we have ever got. Big fish feeding right in front of the camera. We're feeding, hooking fish, playing fish in front of the camera. We see exactly how those big fish react in a fishing situation. Bait such as pellet and corn, worm and caster. And remember, there is hours of underwater footage. Method feeder, float, margin for big carp, shallow fishing. It's all there on the Edge website, www.anglingedge.co.uk. And now you can join on YouTube too. If you love YouTube, join on our Edge YouTube channel and you can watch all this incredible underwater footage. Right, talk me through the pole approach, ah. Lee. The pole approach, Robert. The pole approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick off. I've got a little bit of wet, stodgy stuff here. And I'm going to make like a, I'm going to say like a big golf ball, let's call it. Like that, right? Now, because that's nice and wet, I think that'll take quite a long time to break down. So a nice little like the layer. So it's like soft Play-Doh. Yeah, because it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to take a while to get going. Right, so I'm going to put one of them in. I'm also going to put a little bit of loose in, just as a bit of an attraction like that, around it. You're liking this, mm -hmm. aren't you? Yeah, I'm loving it. And then I'm going to put like, I don't know, 200 maggots in, what? something like that. Because I think that like, something like that, bearing in mind we think it's going to be a while to get going, don't we? We don't think it's going to be straight, like straight away. Well, so I, I, think, think, I think the fish are out at the start yeah, and I then agree. they'll come in later. So that means my ground, but it's not, I've got a little bit of attraction in case it's quick. I've got some live maggots which are going to spread out, and then I've got that solid ball that I reckon I reckon could take an hour to okay. break down. So you've you know, gone down so the ground bait and maggots route. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to pop that in there for now because I'm not going to do that just yet because I want to talk to right. you about me. And Tell me. Really cold for these nice people. Yeah, it's a busy old... Uh, it is, isn't it, hey? Um, and now my rig is mega simple. Look, there's hardly any wind today. There's a little bit forecast later, but nothing too strong. Um... And it is, because we've got marks on the poles these days, one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot deep. There's my mark just well, below. Okay, so it's yeah. actually three and three foot eleven. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. And I've got a bit over depth. I've got a four twelve. Yeah, I've I'm I'll probably start off. I always make sure me when I'm setting my rig, I always go, how much line do I want if the the most I'm gonna go over depth? So I think that's the most I'm gonna go over depth. Probably gonna start like on that rubber there, okay. like an inch or so over depth. Um, and mix it up as the day goes on, I would have thought. Something like that. But a 412 F1 maggot, hollow tip, blacked out because the water's very white. Mm. Do you notice I've got a longer line than yeah, I normally would that. have? But obviously maggots, you can do that, can't you? Exactly, maggots. I've got two number nines. I just feel like I'm going to be picking my rig out a lot. Talk louder because the plane's going oh, over. Here comes a plane. And then I've got a spread bulk down at the bottom. I've sort of, because it's only four foot deep, I've actually started my shot two foot away. And you see, look, like, I've got like four number 10s there and then three number 10 droppers, six inches, five inches, four inches, and then a little sort of spread out. Dead easy, mate. And a six inch hook length, 010 to an 18 SFL, mega easy setup. And I've got a little single five on the old puller. Uh, yeah, single five elastic because it's so shallow. You don't want to be, I just think last thing you want is the fish on the surface, really. You just want to strike bring your pole back and just allow the fish to swim about. So single five is the elastic of choice. Um, That's about it, isn't it? And I don't need another rig. No, I don't need another rig. That is literally about it, mate. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I've got a, a cad pot here. I'm probably going to go with that one. Just like 20 maggots and then, and then shake them out all over the peg. Right, so an really. initial feed and then you're going down the maggot route. So I'm no, going no pellets at the minute. Not at the minute. I'm thinking maybe I've got some pellets in my bag. I think we'll be able to see the response from my feeder well, with pellets, won't we? Yeah, we will. And um, I've got a mate up there and he's fishing pellets. So oh. I feel like... What, well, that guy there, all in yeah, Drennan gear, yeah, yeah. who's yeah. won five world champs. Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, I'll be able to know. Um, he started for me, though. Typical. <laughs> typical. Um, I'll be able to know if uh, pellets are working because he'll be catching on them. And that'll give me something to do and something to think about maybe for later in the day. But for now, that's how I'm going to start. And I'm fancying, I'm fancying a bit of a wait. But hmm. once they arrive, going to be all right, I'm saying. Top job. I'm going to have a chuck in and see what happens. Yeah, let's go. Well, the old feed is going all right, Rob, isn't it? Yeah, I think these are your fish, mate, isn't it? Oh, nice yeah. fish. Yeah, yeah, look at that. It's two pound, is it? Pound, yeah, nice. Pound 12. Yeah, pound 12. Yeah, I'll give you a pound 12 for that. 
Just uh, on the old chin, the old chin hook. The chin hooker, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Look at that. That's really nice. But I think if you get a good start with these, then you can mm. go on your pole, can't you? Definitely, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I haven't had a bite on the pole yet. And, <laughs> and that was your third fish, was it? Yeah. And I so, think that's a good stamp as well. Yeah, yeah. There's loads of like six, eight ounces in here, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Go on. Give us a little bit of insight into what you're doing then. Right, so single maggot. These are semi comatose because I stole these off you. So, well, they're dead, they are. They've been in the freezer, mate. So, they, they're, they're more than semi comatose. They seem, they seem, they seem nice and plump anyway. They're so lovely. No, they're lovely. We're going single maggot. Let's have a look. Yeah, got him. Nice. I got him. Yeah. We're going to go yeah. in here. We're going to go nice little wedge of ground bait and pellet mix that is yeah we're going to put our maggot in there yeah i'm going to just go just a little dunk so it's like 50 50 ground bait and pellets maybe 50 50 yeah. ground bait and pellets yeah, I, nice um, and how far have you gone i've gone same um as i would always go on these sort of eggs 30 meters i've gone 33 meters 33 so meters i think that's a good like happy medium a lot of people will chuck 50 to 60 for a carp yeah. And maybe fish. You're going to have to move your pole. You have, to move, pole. You have to move my pole. I've left my pole in the way. Oh, dear, dear. So before we were interrupted, 33 yeah. metres I've gone. Yep. So nice distance. Comfortable distance. Yeah, I think a lot of people sort of carp fish at 50, 60. Mm. And then obviously people get the pole out and it's like 13 to 16. So yeah. I'm in that middle distance, which doesn't really get looked at. Now, I've just chucked it out. The interesting thing that I like to do, you can see I've got a long rod rest. This is great for anyone that's like a lovely little tip for anyone that is method feeder fishing on a venue that's mixed fisheries. So when you're fishing for skimmers, but you could hook an F1 or a carp. So I've got my long rod rest. Come in here. I've got my line clip. I want to be nice and accurate on my reel. Importantly, I'm not putting the bail arm over. So I'm fishing a fixed feeder today with elastic. So the yeah. fish are going to bolt off. Yeah. What I want to do is make sure if I do hook a carp, that tiptoes round and it wants to disappear into the lake, yeah. I've given myself probably a foot of slack along the rod rest. Yeah. Then I haven't got to mess around taking the bail arm over. Yeah, you're like a 45 degree angle yeah, there, aren't you as well? Nice, mess yeah. I'm taking my bail arm over because my line clip is like easy to get to if I need to unclip yeah. and follow a fish and out. And you've sticked up. And I've sticked out so I can re-stick up again if a, if a fish does take me a uh, little line of looks. If a fish does take me... Um, to the clip and after one clip i can just obviously re-stick up again but by leaving my rod like that i can just be a little bit more relaxed when i'm fishing because okay it might zoom off at 100 mile an hour but i feel like i've given myself just a little bit of breathing time to to deal with a carp i'm making things a little bit easier yeah, no, obviously nice if you do hook a is. fish yeah you just click the bail i'm over and start reeling back in mm. but i'm not fishing with like an ultra tight line like right in front of me pointing at the point yeah. of the feeder because get broke on the clip by a big bit yeah so, what what so how long are you going to leave that for then what well is, what is, I've stop myself, did I? always noisy here with the trains isn't it and yeah lovely yeah I forgot to start the stopwatch so most of my bites have been coming within five minutes right um, so we think five six minute chucks I think five six minute chucks to start with is mm. going to be the way mm. we don't want to be leaving out there for ten minutes silverfish isn't it you need mm. to catch some skimmers you do you need mm. to the thing is, Rob, those stamp fish that you've caught there, if you catch 10 fish like that, you're going wow, to have 15, 15 pounds. Yeah. So, like, you know, 10 bites in the first two hours is 15 pounds in the net, isn't it? What do you so, think, then? 40 pounds, do you think? I think it's a strong easterly war, uh, wind forecast for our match. So, even though it's been pegged amazingly well with lots of room, um, I think that, I think personally, 40 pounds will be an amazing Look rate. At this, so. Mate. This is how important it is, the superstars. There you go, look. Yeah. Bit, of bit of cross channel. Bit of cross channel. Yeah, right, you've got a cold now. You've got a cold answer for a 52 year old. <laughs> John knows. John knows. I wanted to go over there, there's a match on. There's a match on, yeah. Look, yeah. come down to you, see what you're doing. <laughs> We're sneaky. Well, I know that. <laughs> Awesome. I'm just going to fish three rods and uh, spot over Perfect. See you later. So there it is, a little insight into your feeder. I am going to go back to my pole, now it's had a little rest of catching nothing, and see if there is a few fish rocked up.
It's happening now, isn't it? Oh, we've had a bit of an arrival, pal. Yeah, we've had a bit of an arrival. It's happening now. Yeah. Maggots. Yeah, maggots. Yeah, it's... Um... Tell you what, when we got here this morning, the water's really coloured, isn't it? And uh, I thought, just feel like they're going to need to see or be able to find the bait. And Wrigley baits maggots. We've caught a maggots here before, haven't we? we fish like maggot feeders and stuff like that. So... That was on my last two or three fish have been on two maggots. Two maggots? Yeah. Double maggots? Yeah, and do you know how I love the old to hook a double maggot? Go on then. One through the fat end and one through the thin end. Oh. That, to me, you get more hook exposed, but you get the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Little Wrigley's. Yeah, and then at the moment, I'm doing a few maggots in the pot, like literally just like this. And I'll tell you what, this, this little bit's full of tips because then, Little dunk in the yeah, water. Yeah, the dunk. That's important, isn't it? Because they don't fall out. Well, yeah, because I'm fishing 14 and a half metres, so I don't want to be taking my time shipping out. I want to just get the pole on my leg and push it out as quick as I can and not worry about bouncing my maggots out. And I haven't spilt a single one. And then rather than banging my pole, Go on. just give it like a little shake. Shake it, baby. And uh, I feel like that's giving them a little spread. Because I'm not... I said to you earlier, right? not going to be able to loose feed on Saturday if I'm on this bank because the wind is supposed to be like 15 mile an hour, same direction as it is today and I'm already like struggling a little bit like and it's not even windy like it's a big open lake so I thought well I'm not going to be able to loose feed out there at the weekend I want to try and learn something about how I might have to feed it so at the moment just kind of a few had put a few maggots had a little bite there yeah um four of the 12s rig dead light rig because it's only what four foot deep um and just sort of at the moment i'm not getting any like roach or anything no I mean, each fish is a nice fish isn't it you've had like i don't know four or five of those nice six eight ounces that we've just seen and then you've had one that's a pound and a half yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah a nice chunky fish yeah, that's right. And, and bites are coming pretty regularly. Um, I'm sort of trying to discipline myself, really. I'm like trying to give myself like maximum. Get in there. Yeah, I'm trying to give myself a maximum like three minutes without one. If I don't get one in three minutes, I'm sort of shipping in. But I've got to be honest, Rob, I don't think I've shipped back without one since they've turned up. It took no. a long while for them to come. Like you probably caught, what, six before and I had one? Yeah, I had a good day. start on the feed, but now you're motoring ahead, aren't you? Yeah, I've sort of overtook them. Or caught it up at yeah, least yeah, yeah, already. Yeah. It's because the arrival is there. That's the smallest one I've had, that mm. is. But still like six, eight ounce, aren't they? So. Cracking fish. Right, I'm going to power my peg up and see if I can catch a few big boys, well, I, I think. think. you need to, yeah, a few moves, see what happens. This is the target. Just... Turning into a brown boy, he is. About a pound four. If we can get amongst them, we'll be laughing. Right, listen, I need you to get that feeder sorted. I'm going to try my best. I, you, I had you down, Euro Cup champ. <laughs> as soon as I won, what was it called? Ball it, ball in. Balls up. Balls, balls up. up. As soon as I won balls up, I thought I am putting Euro champ on on sorting the feeder out. What are you thinking then? Because obviously that you had it. There was some fish there early, weren't there? There was. I tell you what, I've just done. Go I've on. just had probably twenty minutes without a line in the water. So I want to see first before I put a load of bait in. Is it a case of rest in a swim? Because a rest can be sometimes as good as attacking it. Yes. So I know you're catching a few. I want to just see before I start attacking it though, is a rest the right way to do things? I understand. So I'm going to chuck back out. What hook, the bait, what, what hook bait have you had on, Rob? Just single maggots? Just single maggot. I think, I think maggots are greatly, aren't they, for mm. catching everything. Um, uh, do, you, do you know what? I've been catching on maggot and a pinky or two maggots. And I know there's a lot of fish there, but I I was fishing single maggot and I wasn't catching anything. I've just put like maggot and two pinkies on. 
I'm thinking like the water's really coloured. You're thinking a little bit bigger bait? Yeah, and I've put like five inches of line on the bottom. You know, like just ligged it on a bit. I just think like, get me shake going on to hear me voice. I feel like I'm feeding like 20 maggots every chart. I think there's a lot of fish grubbing around there and I just want them to pick the bait out a bit quicker. Um, and I just wondered maybe on that method, maybe if like a bigger hook bait would be, look at that, that's the quickest bite I've had today, Rob. That's yeah. the quickest bite I've had since I've been here and it's the biggest hook bait I've put on. You're catching really well now. I'm not being funny, Lee, but you wouldn't be even entertaining the feeder if you were catching not, like that. No, you're right. You're 100% right, you wouldn't. But if it takes two hours for this to happen, yeah. I you need be... you need something for that first hour, hour and a half, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to want, you know, as much as we can catch early on. That was really interesting that that went under so quick. I mean, that, that fish has nailed that. Isn't it funny because most venues you go to, you wouldn't dream of sort of putting on big up bait like that, but somewhere like Barston where I fish like 10 mil wafters and stuff like that, don't we, you know? Yeah, the carpers are catching skimmers on massive baits, aren't they? Yeah. I think with, even like today, Lee, it's a busy fishery, isn't it? It gets a lot of bait. There's carp anglers around the lake. There's obviously a little match going on as well. There's a lot of bait going in today. It's, it's never been a place where I thought you can't feed or you can't be aggressive. No. I think you've got to be aggressive here. No, exactly. I think you're absolutely right, mate. So I, even though it's cold, and I think conditions are going to be nasty. I mean, I caught that one so quick and I've shipped back out there and I'm feeding maggots again. It's like 90 seconds between feeds, isn't it? You know. When I've just looked at your rig, it's like tailor-made for that sort of thing as well, isn't it? Fishing in the sort of the bottom third. Rather than fishing in that bottom six inch, you're fishing in the bottom 18 inch, aren't you, with that shot in? 100%. And which, I mean... It's hard, like I say, it's so coloured, Rob. I just can't believe that they're seeing anything. I feel like, I reckon they're grubbing. Do you think? Yeah, I think they're grubbing around, I do. I just, that's what I think. I think they're grubbing on the, I think that's why the maggots are good. I mean, I'm fishing live maggots on the Irk. So usually, like, I've just been fishing at Medlands and we've been fishing casters. You wouldn't even dream about fishing maggots, you know what I mean? It's too, they're too lively for like the little roach and stuff like that, but we're not catching any of them, are we? No, nothing. You've had a couple of roach, haven't you? One but not... roach I've had, yeah, one roach. Never thought, felt this is a, like a roachy venue though, have you? No, years ago, I remember having a lovely day in the Camazan final on roach and drew poorly, but you're not doing that anymore. No. I mean, obviously, you're, you're an ad worm and joke career, aren't you? What do you think about that? Or yeah, well, that's a good bit question. bit negative, is it? Yeah, a lot of people... Um, a lot of people have been saying about worm and joker. Like, Westy's just up there and he asked me, he said, oh, are you getting any worm and joker? Could you bring me some down? I, said, I just don't think you're going to win with it, Rob. I don't, I don't feel like... I don't feel like I want them really eating those baits. You know, I want them... I want them eating bigger baits that they can they can pick out. I'm waiting a little bit longer this time. Yeah, I think I think you're looking at maggots and bigger, aren't you? Maggots and pellets. I mean, you could catch a few on pellets, you know, in, in the right in the right area. Yeah, I think you could. I tell you what, I'd fancy like six mil expanders, you know, like a big a big expander, maybe even like loose feeding fours. Hmm. Yeah, I'll tell you where you'd catch on that. In them late 50s, you've got deeper water close and I think the fish tend to be a little bit bigger. Yeah. I had a great day then, not this early in the year. Probably another month on from it is from, from now, but last year, this, you know. <laughs> what have you got? Oh, look at this. You've just been saying you've not had any roach. <laughs> no, no, it might not even be a roach, Rob. It might be a postage stamp skimmer. It what is, is it, a bottle well, Look at that, my hook bait's nearly as big as it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Incredible. But I think, I think right, you know around that corner, 50, 54 yeah, to 60, I'm going to say, is going to be the area. What are you saying, like throw fours, fish, fish, fish of sticks on the earth? Yeah, I am, yeah. I think you're throwing four mils, like softened fours. Yeah. 
and fishing a, either a four or six mil expander on the hook, and I think you're catching proper skimmers, you know, pound to three pounders. Yeah, then big, then big ones. I'm not going to say all day, but I think you'll have the last two hours where you, you'll you'll put a big weight in your net. Mm. I tell you what, Rob, I could have a go at that here, couldn't I? Because I'm feeding, I'm fishing this long. You could do. I could start like loose feeding some fours, like at like ten, eight, ten meters or something, couldn't I? Just add a little stab then, a, a little. I quite fancy that. I quite fancy that as something different. Like we always tend to like think about natural baits on that shorter line. But why wouldn't you do pellets? I think it's a bit more of a throwaway line. It's a line you're going to catch on later, isn't it? Yeah, you can imagine if they rock up. The thing is with pellets, it's so fast if they rock up on it, isn't it? Yeah. Is yes, this the area do... to do it, though? I always uh, feel it's a bit shallower here. Yeah, I agree, yeah. I think maybe 10 pegs to our right, you'd do it, wouldn't you? Yeah. I think if it worked here, you'd say it'd work here. I mean, yeah, I, I, you're right. I wouldn't expect to be catching at 10 metres on this peg, would you? No. What's the pegging for your final? Well, it's it's brilliant to be fair. It's thirty three anglers in the final, I think, and uh, got the whole lake. So we'll be fishing like one miss two for a lot of it, apart from on like the points and that. Right. So you're gonna have tons of room. You have to, which which is often a, you catch short when you get room, don't you? Yeah, you'd think pole would come into it more. I just I just yeah I think based on what we're seeing. Already with me and you, it's looking more poly, isn't it? Mm. I think the only thing that will give this a bit of a advantage is if we start catching some bigger fish on it. Like if every one of mine is a pound plus, yes, then it becomes then it becomes good, doesn't it? Bites are slow. I mean, I, I've literally just picked up and pricked one then, but other than that, it's not exactly rigid with fish at the minute. I'll tell you one thing that's... I see another train thunders past. I'll let that go by so I can... not shout at Rob. <laughs> I was going to say, Rob, you can also, like, throw bait here, can't you? So maybe, like, throw in, like, little balls of micro short instead, perhaps. Mm. Just thinking, what am I going to do? I can't just have one line out there, can I? Not so sure. Does it just get stronger and stronger? Be nice to have somewhere that for a big finish, though, wouldn't it? We like a big finish. I love a big finish. Yeah, imagine how good you'd feel if you've got sort of like 30, 40 pounds in the net and then you have three, three, three pounds in the last five minutes somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What time? What's your match? What time's the match? Do you know, I'm not 100% sure. It's 8.15 draw, so if I was a betting man... Half I'd 10 till half, half 3. Half 10, half 3, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, you'd definitely feel if it was till 4, you'd, you'd have a chance short. Hmm. Oh, no, if it was till 4, I absolutely agree. But, Mike, Rob, what about a half past 2? You know, you're, you're dropping on that line, like you've just said there. I remember fishing a match once here before and catching one every bung in for three hours. And I had them in one net, like skimmers. And then it went a bit quiet and I, I seemed to like be so slow. Like last two hours, I was like, oh, it's been so much slower. But the fish were bigger stand. Anyway, at the weigh-in, that first net had like 26 pound in it. And the second net had like 30 odd, big 30. Really? And it had like half the amount of fish in it. Yeah. In two hours. As soon as you start catching them brown ones, that's the one, isn't it? You want to catch some nice yeah. big brown... Brown yeah, skimmers. It's, yeah, it's got me thinking that. That's a good thing for practicing. I'll tell What's you now. What's happening? I'm, You've not had a fish for a while. No, I just. No, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I've literally just been putting maggots in. I'm just going to get a little bit of ground bait and just blob a little bit of ground bait in again. See if I can. See if they need a bit of smell to suck them back. Because I have. You're right. I've just had like that runner fish and then just sat there for a little bit. Then I'm also tempted about this. Short pellet thing for sure. I will say the water's cold, isn't it? It is cold, mate. Yeah, water is cold. It's four um, four degrees in the van on the way here. Yeah. Daytime temperatures. What is it going to get to today? Ten or eleven? Yeah. Max. Uh, well, ten, but feels like six. Yeah. That wind is cool, isn't it? Yeah, freezing. 
Well, have a look this, at that. This is probably, what's this, an easterly wind, isn't it? This is a southeasterly, yeah, at the moment. Or east, more east than southeast, mm. I'd say. And you know what they say, Mr. Kerry, when the wind is in the east, the fish bite the least. Yeah, go to the pub. This has been in now for three minutes, just come up to four minutes. I think you need to be getting bites within five minutes on this, don't you? Oh, for sure. You, well, the thing is, you're not catching a big enough stamp to justify leaving it any longer, are you? No. What's interesting is, I just had that runner fish, and it's definitely like a little slow spell. i tell you what, mate, you catch two or three, like, six ounces, then you have a little slow spell. It's not exactly solid, do you know what I mean? No. You'd think with maggots, you'd be coming back with like a little roach every now and again, yeah. like to fill in the gaps. But it's not like there's millions of fish there. No, I've got two maggots on again this time, just to see if there's... I'm getting an odd line off. I feel there's bait there, but... You've put, look, you've put a bit of bait in, haven't you? I have put a bit of bait in, yeah. I've been chucking out my... Uh... Do, do you think it'd be worth putting like two metres on cage? and having a, having a chuck beyond it? Yeah, a little bit of fresh... Fresh, fresh ground, if you get in liners. I don't feel there's millions there. I mm. always wonder when you're doing that, like where does that where does that end? Yeah, oh, I agree. Especially yeah. when we're quite early, you know, it's not it's not as if we're we're looking to use all our tricks at the minute. No, you're right. But you might only be doing it for two hours, Rob. Yeah. Yeah, you might have to have a very quick match on this feeder before you have another It's like two matches, isn't it, you're fishing? Two matches, yeah. Are you gonna accelerate that feeder a bit quicker? All right, it's been for five minutes, a couple of liners, that's all. So I'm going to put in a little bit of bait, not loads. Clip off this feed up. Put my little rocket on. And then I've got a mixture of four mils, micros, bit of ground bait. Just going to cap it off with a, a little bit of ground bait. We'll put that in. Notice it's a bottom weighted feeder, so should hold the bait in. Hits the surface. One little pull and he's out. I think one of those in. and then we could chuck our little feeder over the top. It's either going to be kill or, kill or cure it. I'm going to go with uh, Lee's suggestion of a double maggot instead of a single. Wedge that bait in the feeder, fold my hook bait back. Okay, cover it up. We'll lob it out. I'm using a 24 grammer. Partly because we've seen on like the underwater stuff we've done that those light 18 grammers are great. They're going with a beautiful little plot, but sometimes and it is only sometimes, sometimes you just need that slightly heavier feeder to hook the fish. So that's a 24 gram hybrid feeder that is, rather than the, the baby 18 grammer. What was that Lee, skimmer? Yeah, it was a skimmer mate, yeah. Taking an age to sink the line, make sure everything's sunk. Because I don't want to be pulling that feeder away from where it's landed. I don't want to ruin that little trap I've set. Another one? Yeah, that's, that's the thing, Rob. It, you know, like, you can sit like that for like 10 minutes for nothing, 
obviously the one before I caught really quickly, and then you just you catch two in two chucks for a pound, you know. Mm. Say what, Al? Mm, three, I would say. What about you? Interesting that you caught on it though, isn't it? Interesting that you caught on it though, isn't it? Brought some guy with me today. Um, well, yeah, who, who is that guy next door know. to he us? He's talking to us though, doesn't he? What did he say his name was? I think he said his name was five times. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know what he meant by that. I don't know. Really weird, he offered to like bring me and everything. <laughs> like got in his van. Imagine, and, uh... imagine having five times world champion Alan Scothorn as your chauffeur for the day. <laughs> like angling royalty. <laughs> angling royalty, isn't he? Just add one, Lee, put some bait in. Yeah. Add one straight away, probably uh, yeah. a pound. Shows that they want a bit of bait, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, it does, yeah. See if we can catch another one over the top of that. And if not, we'll feed again, see what happens. Might go and have a spy on Alan a bit. See what he's doing. I think he, he was going to fish with pellets. So, one of the reasons I chose maggots, just give us something to talk about in the van on the way out. Otherwise, you'll be boring me about Tales of World Championships and great victories or bad pegs. It was like a, a two minute fish that was, Lee. If you can catch one of them every two minutes, you'd be laughing, wouldn't you? I'll tell you what, we've got a load of anglers here today, haven't we, on the bank? Yeah. Name some, some, of the, some of the superstars. We've got Alan Scothorn. We've got Graham West. Go on, Westy. We've got John Arthur. Frankie. Frankie Ginicelli down the bank. Yeah, well, well, they can't all be superstars, can they? <laughs> <laughs> then he's, uh, I think, he's brought his mate out as well, hasn't he? Someone Bennett, he said. And Andy Bennett, was it? Was Something it someone like called that, yeah. Andy? Yeah. Obviously, but, everyone's taking this final at the weekend pretty serious, aren't they? It sounds like it, doesn't it? I even brought my only mate to help me with tactics. <laughs> I feel blessed just to be in the same company on the same lake as these people. And there's, and there's a little match going on on the other side, Rob, isn't there? Yeah, how many's on that? Ten, a dozen? Ten, yeah. There's another, I'd say, ten pleasure anglers. There's, yeah. There's somebody practising for the Bait Tech um, Feeder Masters Super League. Yeah, They've three, come down and said There's a couple of them down there, isn't there? Foster Pig Chuckers. Good lads. So, yeah, it's good. It's great to see the enthusiasm at this place, isn't it? Yeah, when you think a cold, wet Wednesday. Yeah. Early March. And what have we got? We must have 25 people around the lake. Yeah. Not being funny though, it is like, I'm saying, if I had to pick the best, yeah. I'm struggling to find a better one than no. Barston Lakes. Mega place, because oh. you can come and carp fish and obviously you can hear the guys opposite, their bite alarms are going every now and again, aren't they? They're catching an yeah. odd carp. It's feeder fish, pole fish. Silver's carp. That's you name what it. I like about it, Rob. You can do anything here. You can literally do. They catch on pellet wagglers in the summer, bomb and pellet, method, pole, obviously. 
It's a great place to come fishing. You never, you never dead here either, are you? You never like dead in the water. You can all, there's always like, remember the feeder masters matches where you catch like two big doubles in the last 10 minutes and mm. stuff. And a few liners, this chuck as well. Have you fed any ground bait at all there, Lee? Yeah, I fed one ball at the start, Rob. I had a ball of ground bait at the start. And I've just sort of, I've tried to keep putting a tiny little bit in. Yeah, could you go like every third fish, put a little mm. put a little ball in? Mm, that's what, I mean, I'm just gonna do that again now, because I tell you now, I just caught a couple and then it's gone again, isn't it? Yeah. Let's I think if you, if you can I say to yourself, I'll catch, look. catch two, how, how big's that? Well, I can take that little lid off that pot all the time. Yeah, like that, like a, a little conker of ground bait. Yeah, yeah, I literally just, just pressed a little bit of like, stodge in my pot. It's weird because he doesn't, I didn't seem to get an instant response to it, but then when they came, I, you know, I caught two or three quickly. You feel like they'd want something smelly with that colour, wouldn't you? Yeah, I look at the colour and think this is, you need to put some ground bait in. So I think that pellet, that pellet short might not be dead, you know. I'm, I'm going to get up in box and sort it out in a minute. I had enough liners, you know, that chuck to tell me there's enough fish there. I had a little you... tiny pluck where I think a fish has maybe pricked itself. Sprung my trap, so I'm gonna have to. Are you still on the old single? Sorry? Still on the old single? No, maggot? double. Double. Took your advice, put oh. a double on. I wonder if like live maggots, Rob. Yeah, maybe. I'm gonna come and get some pinkies in a minute. Yeah. I haven't got any fluoro maggots. I wonder if a fluoro maggot would work. Mm. Hey, listen, what, what's wrong with a tiny wafter? Yeah, could work. Or a little, exp or an expander. You know the thing I always think with like a wafter, you've got more chance of catching them better stampers. Yes. Yeah, that's a three pound, three pound fish bait, isn't it? Yeah, you don't really want to be winding in them, them littlers, do you? Look, I fed that ball. I've just got one. Yeah, I, th I think like a little ball after every two fish. Mm. Mm, you could be right, mate. Yeah, you could be right there. Or how about this? Maybe a, like capping your pot with putting your maggots in, and then capping your pot with a bit of that stodge. Really? Now, oh, listen. Now you're getting technical. Slightly bigger pot, maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll stick with uh, just putting a few maggots. Just in the chucking pot it out every... there for you. I'm just chucking an idea in. No, I liked it. I liked it. I wasn't. I wasn't ruling it out completely. Not sure if it wants ground bait every chuck. No. Never had it as that sort of venue. <laughs> Don't feel like I'm ruining it yet because I'm catching odd fish, but I'm not sure that I've found the magic, the magic way just as yet. What depth is it? Three and a half foot? Yeah, three and a half, four foot. Would you be happy fishing that way in five foot? Um, hmm, good question that. Is that why you're thinking the pellets in them deeps? I'm just thinking that if you drew an area and it's five foot deep, it's towing like it is, do is doing. Or we know this place can tow quite heavily. Are you rattling in a few maggots? Mm, fair comment. Seems like they'll just like go everywhere. <laughs> yeah, might not be the one. What are you saying the wind's forecast for at the weekend? Mm, like 12 to 14 mile an hour. 
this exact direction now. Okay. It's going to be tricky, that, isn't it? I mean, it's not even windy, and that it's just starting to get a bit annoying. Another, another nice one. Pounder, Rob. Yeah, he's a pound. Just over, probably. Is he? Yeah. Double maggot. It's nice. I'm going to put a bit, a little bit more bait in. See if that works. Because I don't think you can just keep catching those fish by not feeding. So mm. put a little bit of bait in and repeat the process. Tell you what, pal, it's going to make such a difference if you can get amongst these. Like, they are the difference makers, those boys, Rob, well, aren't they? Because those little ones, they're sort of, they're like eight ounces each. See my pole for this guy. Look at him, mate. He's got to be three pound, hasn't he? Right, I am keen to feed another line. I'm happy with what I'm doing, and I am catching fish, and it's steady away. It's lovely fishing, if I'm being honest, because it's not a fish every bung in. You have to sort of work, think, mix it up a little bit, which I prefer. I do like it when you're fishing like that. Um, it's enjoyable, but you know what Rob and I are like, where's the big finish? Where's it coming from? So what I've done is I've taken some of my micros that I brought today and I've literally just soaked them right up. So they're like, I mean, they're, they're, they're practically ruined. You, you couldn't put them on a method now like they are, but they're nice and mushy, they're nice and soft. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna get a big handful of them, put them in my cup, and I'm just gonna get a bit of ground bait and put it on top, just so it's sort of like extra smell if you like. So I've got like two thirds of a pot there now. And I'm just gonna pop them in at like 10 meters. It seems quite a lot of fun. Um, but obviously, you know, the guys opposite are spotting in. So, you know, these fish are used to seeing in the amount of space. Um, I'm just gonna do that at like, I'm gonna do that right there, like probably 10 and a half meters ish. Um, I'm just gonna sort of swirl it around. Like right, look, give it a big old swirl like that. It's not loads of bait to be honest. Like, it's two pots in. That's the sort of like big arrival I'm looking for. But I do want to put a or I would want to try a pellet on it. So I'm not gonna go nuts just yet, but really wet over wetted micros. Just see how that goes. See if that'll give me somewhere where I can catch some of them big ones, because I think they're gonna be real difference makers. It's something a bit different, isn't it? So, Mr. Wooten, any conclusions for me today from the feeder? You know, one thing I will say is if this was a feeder only match, I think what I've done is, is, is okay. You know, I'd be happy to fish against maybe a cage feeder angler with my mm. little hybrid feeder. I think my stamp's been pretty good. I'd say my average size has been a pound. What's that one there? You got a decent fish? Yeah, I, I didn't even see a bite. Oh, right. <laughs> so I, I think my average size has been like a pound, which, which is pretty good when you've got a lot of six or eight ounce fish in here. There's a lot of mouths to feed. Yeah. I've had a lot of those six, six, eight ounce fish, you know, much. This, this one's pushing a pound, but that's your average, isn't it? One yeah, like yeah, I'd say that's what, yeah, that, well, that, that and bigger, yeah. Yeah. But nowhere near the same pace as you. So I think what we've got to say is, especially for the second half of the match, or the last three hours maybe, pole is going to be the way to go if you're going to win any money. I think mm. pole is going to be the way to go. Mm. But I'd be happy putting this up against maybe an open-end feeder approach for the first 90 minutes at least. Yeah. 
I've fished ground bait and micros, a mixture of the two. It's like a crushed pellet ground bait. It's that F1 sweet. You know, I love that S1 sweet. Crushed, yeah. crushed expander with some micros. And single and double maggot. Double maggot's been pretty good, you know. I've been happy using double maggot. Slightly bigger bait. We mentioned that earlier. Hmm. The most important thing, though, Lee, for me, feeding. It's not been a day where you've just been like, chucking out and just letting the feeder fish you've needed to feed and it's the same with you isn't it you've had to keep plopping that little ball of ground bait in every now and again you've had to fill up your pot every single time you've shipped it out it's not a negative venue this isn't is it absolutely not mate you're absolutely bang on there and it seems like that, that's, a, that's a good point like you've definitely had a little response every time you've picked your feeder up and like put one in haven't you yeah every yeah. single time do you think you'd do that with the particles or do you think maybe even a bit of sloppy ground bait? Yeah, maybe. I think you could do it with some sloppy ground bait. I'm putting a little bit of ground bait in just to cap, cap my feed off. And I feel that's been really good. So when I, when I look at it, it's probably 50% ground bait, 50% pellets. I think it's important just not to have loads of little, little tiny particles in the peg. You can have those tiny particles as in the ground bait and the micros, but you need something a little bit bigger. So that's why the, the, we've got these softened four mils in there. I think I need them picking up slightly bigger baits as well as the smaller baits. The smaller baits for me are like, they're there to attract the fish. And we get them picking up some slightly bigger, bigger baits, and then hopefully my hook bait. Mm. I'm going to put some more bait in again now. I think it's worked every single time. Are you still happy with your target weight for the weekend? Mm, I think forty pounds is going to be a good weight. I mean, we, you know, we've been pleasure fishing today, and Alan's been fishing pole there, and he's been very similar to me. It's been fits and starts. Sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not. You know, I'm, I'm going to say that I'm. I don't think it's going to be amazing. You know, it's. I would have expected. So sort of once I started catching Rob, I almost thought, oh, here we go. We're just going to have a great day. It's not been like that, has it? No, it's not been Sack Up City, has it? Far from Sack Up City, yeah. But it's still good, it's still amazing fishing. Probably had like 25 pound-ish, if you like, in in sort of nearly four hours fishing, but but not not the 40 pound that I was, you know, I haven't got to 40 pound, no, no doubt about that. So I think expectations need to meet meet with reality, really. <laughs> Yeah, especially when you've got, I know you're going to have loads of room at the weekend, but when you've got 30 guys around the lake all targeting silvers, yeah, that's the difference, isn't it? No, it's that is a big difference. Absolutely. It's not like you've got one guy next to you carp fishing and someone else, you get the silvers to yourself. Everyone's going to be targeting those silvers. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, that. I mean, there's only, there's only me, Alan, and Westy pole fishing on this bank, so you... You know, I've got loads of space on that pole line to my left. You'd think that the fish would be coming thick and fast, wouldn't you? But Yeah, you would, yeah. But they definitely seem to come in little spells. What do you think about your, your pellet short? Do you think that's going well, to be... Well, obviously, as you saw, I fed them. Um, and they're... Uh, and I've been on it two or three times. I just feel like, you know, I, put, I was quite aggressive with the feed there, sort of almost like saying, come on then, lads, if you want to come and rock up, rock up. But it just hasn't been that day. You know, we just haven't had that big rock up, have we? So No, this, this isn't the area for that, though, is it? No, it isn't. If they'd have rocked up here, you know they're going to rock up everywhere, don't you? Mm, and it's not, it's not put me off it, Rob, because it's done no harm to my peg out there, you know. No. So, so why wouldn't I give myself somewhere that I can potentially win from? You know, um, you know, I'm certainly, I'm certainly going to do something like that uh, on uh, on the practice match on Friday and give myself a chance. But I've, look, I've, re I've really enjoyed the session because it's it's taught us some interesting things about the fishing. But you can just see there, it's just. You know, at this time now, we're approaching the end of the day. This is when 
Really, it should be sack up City, shouldn't it? Yeah, you, know? you think everything should be kicking off. You've got a corp on the far bank. Go on, mate. <laughs> I've seen, seen an odd corp uh, topping off the corner of the island, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just uh, every now and again, one will, one will jump out. Well, fantastic fishing as always, and quite a bit to think about before our uh, before my visit of the weekend. Hasn't it sure. been a beautiful day though, Lee? Beautiful day, mate. Beautiful day. What a, what a way. Isn't it nice to be able to pack up your kit in the sun instead of the rain for once? I know. Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. Remember, you can subscribe to the channel by hitting this wonderful logo just here, or, you can watch the latest video by clicking this box here.